Assalamualaikum everyone, my name is Miska Jahan and in today's video we're gonna be talking about the things they don't really tell you when it comes to marriage. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a marriage expert. I'm just a very highly observant person. Inshallah, like in April of this year, 2020, it'll be my third anniversary with my husband. Alhamdulillah, like we've been having a very blissful marriage. And yeah, I just feel like I'm onto something. I feel like I've got, you know, something figured out. And for those of you who are looking for this advice, maybe you're just curious about what marriage life is gonna be like and like how to navigate successfully through it. This is gonna be a nice, fun, informational video for you. So before we get into the video, I wanna mention today's sponsor, which is Halal World Depot. Halal World Depot is your online go-to destination for anything that has to do with halal meat and lifestyle. They sell an assortment of items, but what they're known for mostly is their halal meats. I think it's a wonderful place to buy from if you're gonna buy in bulk, if you don't wanna you know, make a trip to like a nearby or far away halal marketplace. It's super convenient. They have a nice website and they have a bunch of items for sale that you can pick out. The fun part is it gets shipped to your home. It comes in a nice styrofoam chest with ice packs and everything. So I would highly recommend it if you're gonna shop bulk, if you don't like to make extra trips, you're busy, you got you know guests coming. They're really fast and the way that they ship is that nothing will sit in the post office like on a Sunday. They will make sure to ship in a way so that way it just comes directly to your home within two days. Yeah, make sure to check them out. Let them know I sent you over there. I have provided links and coupon code down below. They provide a really wonderful service and it's just amazing that we live in a world where we can access these type of things to suit our needs as Muslims so easily at the tip of our fingers. So yeah, make sure to check them out and let them know I sent you and we're gonna go ahead and get on with the rest of the video. All right, so what they don't tell you about marriage. We're gonna be talking about love, handling conflict and dealing with in-laws. So first of all, I think that people get the wrong, um, they get a misconception about what love is what a marriage is because of what they see in the movies or maybe just because of like pop culture personally i think i've done a very good job at uh making sure that i don't fall prey to like these mixed messages that the media tries to give us when it comes to like love and you know respect between spouses and stuff like that a lot of movies make it seem like your spouse is supposed to complete you as a person or they're supposed they're responsible for your happiness you're responsible for their happiness and to some degree you know that is gonna play a part but it's not the whole picture i mentioned in a previous video that once i fell in love with my husband and like once we got married and everything i felt like a more complete person but that was because i had already pretty much filled out myself i just needed to like i just wanted to share my life with someone i was at that stage so that's why i felt like a complete person just because you're married doesn't mean that you can't feel lonely sometimes it does happen but if you watch that video i talk about like how to deal with loneliness and i come up with different methods that you can use so make sure to check out that video yeah love is not the answer to everything just because you're married doesn't mean that there are gonna be times where you're not happy it's not like the solution to everything with that being said i think it's always beneficial to choose a person to marry that goes naturally with the way you see your life heading towards if that makes sense and that could be a whole nother video but this video is talking about people who are already married so when you're married initially you have this period commonly known as like the honeymoon period this is like the time in the marriage where you're willing to overlook certain flaws because you just love this person and it's because it's just like a new thing and you know emotions hormones feelings all this stuff but then at a certain point you know you start to notice things you want to you know set certain norms because now you're married or maybe you've been married for a certain period of time and you just want to run things more smoothly like for example picking clothes off the floor or not leaving socks underneath the couch like these type of things and then yeah you'll notice things about each other that you want to correct or you want to come to a compromise with and during this period of time in the marriage where it's like a lot you know you've passed the honeymoon stage you're still in love but you know you're trying to overcome certain conflicts or sometimes it's even minor things you're just trying to still understand each other's language right this is the time period where it kind of gets a little tumultuous uh, there's lots of ups and downs but i think it's just 
like a storming period, right? Um, I forgot what it was called, but there's like a theory that whenever people are working together in a group or whatever, there's like a forming, norming, no, forming, storming, norming, and conforming. I forgot what the order is, but something like that. This is just like the storming period. So a healthy way to deal with this point in your marriage is to make sure that you're speaking to each other in a way that's like respectful never play or never fight dirty <laughs> there's a theory there is a lot of talk saying that uh, when it comes to men and women when they're in a relationship when they're in a marriage what the man desires the most is respect and then what the woman desires the most is love obviously there's gonna be a combination of both that each spouse wants to receive but yeah for the most part um, men value respect over love and then women value love over respect whenever a husband and wife are trying to overcome conflict they're trying to reach a compromise maybe it's getting a little tense it's very important that they speak to each other in a way that is respectful and loving right so for example let's say the wife likes to leave socks underneath the couch or she doesn't pick up after herself or whatever these things happen i myself am a messy person so this has happened to me. I think the best way that the husband can address it to the wife is to say, you know, sweetheart, you know, you start off with something loving, right? Or, you know, in Pachto we say, John. If I was speaking to myself, I'd be like, Musko John. <laughs> then you say, like, I like to have a clean home. I want everything to be orderly. And I feel like whenever you leave your socks underneath the couch, it doesn't help us to maintain that and I find it overwhelming having to pick up after you or actually that could be, probably be better said but you guys know what I'm talking about right you have to like say it almost the same way that therapists will get couples that are in counseling to talk to each other um, you have to mention how you're feeling you have to mention what the problem is and then you have to come up with a possible solution together so let's say that the wife you know just forgets like she just when she comes home from work or when she's you know had a long day or whatever she just takes her socks off and that's like her immediate way to relax maybe she can set a reminder for herself so that way you know after she's arrived from work you know five minutes after she can get a reminder to like put her socks in the laundry basket this is just like the weirdest example but an example nonetheless i think if you approach your wife or your husband with a solution to the problem and you make it seem like or you, you show that you're trying to like work together you don't try to make yourself look like you're superior to the other person you know you're just trying to find a solution together solve the problem and then move on with better things in life right because who has time to talk about socks underneath the couch you know other than like two minutes literally no more time than that and usually it's the husbands that leave the socks underneath the couch so just saying yeah but um yeah, when it comes to love, it's all about, you know, finding solutions together, maintaining that healthy relationship. I can make a whole nother video on this, but I have some other topics that I want to talk about that are going to be addressed in this video. All I want to say is that it's good to define expectations of each other and it's good to understand one another, you know? It's good to be flexible. It's good to make compromises with each other. And sometimes it's going to be 80-20 at one point in your lives and then the other times it's gonna be 50 50 and then it might shift to the reverse be 20 80 like it's not always gonna be an equal situation things happen life happens the most important thing is that you have to understand what you want out of the relationship right and then you express that to your partner and then your partner has to be open to it as well and you have to be open to what their needs are as well so it's like communication communication is the most powerful thing that you can have in a marriage and that is like one of the strongest criteria I would recommend when it comes to finding a spouse. If you're married to someone that doesn't communicate very well, the spouse that has a more communicative you know, style should almost direct the person to be more talkative and they need to express like why they need more communication. You might need to list the benefits, you might need to list the fact that you know, you don't like being in a position where you don't know what the other person is thinking like these are 
sometimes the things that you need to express so that way your partner can be more receptive and they can understand like why you need them to talk more to you and yeah it's just like a lifelong sort of thing that needs to be worked on and it should be done daily or almost daily in my opinion so I know I messed up the order of this, but this was pretty much talking about handling conflict. Uh, next we're gonna be talking about love. And I did mention that you shouldn't copy what you see in the movies. You shouldn't try to take whatever commercialized definition of love that you've seen in the media and try to apply it to your uh, marriage, your relationship. My husband and I were both very, we keep ourselves pretty busy. He has his own thing going on, I have my own thing going on, and whenever we, you know, spend time together, it's an amazing thing because we always have something new to talk about. We can always share new things that we've learned, we can tell each other new jokes, like funny observations, whatever. Like these are the type of things that make our marriage more interesting, our conversations more interesting, and uh, we feel more connected that way. Sometimes I feel like you need more new material between a couple to just like keep it alive and i'm the kind of person and i know that my husband is the kind of person where we're we are constantly growing ourselves we are constantly developing ourselves so um, it's like a way of us keeping track of one another and making sure that you know we're both in a good place like physically mentally iman wise as well like we just keep track of one another and we feel close this way I don't really underst understand like the mentality that you always need to be with your spouse at all times. Like I don't understand that. Like my husband and I, we barely text each other. We just come home to each other and then that is our time together. And for us, it's like more special that way. Um, I think in the beginning of like after we got engaged and like whenever we got married, like we would send each other like regular texts throughout the day or whatever. But Sometimes you get busy, like if I, I don't expect him to text me back during work times and I don't I don't think he expects me to do the same. So just understand that when it comes to love, like you can't be insecure. If you have a high value of yourself, you're not gonna be like that insecure person that's constantly asking, where are you? What are you doing? I love you, I love you, why haven't you responded back? Like that type of behavior just like it's just like desperate insecurity. Um, it's good to have your own thing going on. And not only is it gonna make you more attractive to your spouse, you're gonna be more fulfilled as well. So always have your own thing going on, whether it's a hobby or maybe you're running a business, you know, YouTube channel, whatever, just like have something that you're working on. So that way when you do have time spent apart, when you guys eventually do come together, maybe at the end of the day, in the morning, whatever it is, with the time that you've uh, set to spend together, you can have, you can give each other regular updates, you have something to talk about. And it also just makes that time a lot more special so another thing i want to mention is that i know that there is like a theory that there is such love such a thing as like love at first sight and while it does exist for some people i would say that love is something that just like grows over time the type of love that i developed for my husband when we both felt that we were right for each other it was something that developed over time i if you ask both of us it definitely was not a situation where it was love at first sight i think we you know we observed each other's behavior the way we handled things their sense of humor the trajectory of where they were heading stuff like that these are the type of things that you look for and then you know once you spend enough time together that is when love forms there are some people who get it right on the first try it's just like the instant love connection which is really great but i found that for the most part i would say like 75 to 80 percent of the time people grow in love with each other another thing i wanted to mention is that when you get married to someone or when you're in the marriage you should always place yourself in a position where you're benefiting from the marriage i think too many you know men and women sacrifice themselves for each other because they're just trying to make it work and while you should always try to make it work there's always going to be those situations those type of relationships where it's carried on for maybe too long and then you have to ask yourself whether or not you're benefiting from this situation marriage should be beneficial to both parties an example of a marriage that wouldn't benefit is like let's say you're the wife and you know your husband expects you to work full time plus you know take care of the kids plus clean plus cook those are unreasonable expectations. Now, if the wife wants to put it on herself, that's up to her. But these sort of expectations to be forced onto the wife, she's not exactly benefiting. She's just tiring herself out. 
she's probably aging very fast and she's probably not able to take care of herself. Uh, she's, she's not in a good position, right? Now, vice versa, if the wife expects the husband to, I don't know, like earn 10 times more than he currently is earning, even though she married him at that stage that he's in, that would be unreasonable as well. Of course, you know, there are chances that he could possibly double or triple his income over a certain period of time it's not always going to be the case so you have to have like reasonable expectations of each other and you have to always make sure that you're putting yourself in a position where you benefit from the marriage right and it should be a mutual benefit right you guys should respect one another have love for each other comfort each other support one another sometimes you need to give your spouse the little kick in the butt they need sometimes sometimes and vice versa like it's on a case-by-case -case basis right it's you two against the world trying to make yourselves put in a higher position you know support your family support your children eventually if you haven't had children yet like this is what marriage is is like two people working together to reach a certain goal be as happy as they possibly can be or content as they can possibly be and yeah that's like a successful happy marriage make sure to remind each other that they love each other and you know every once in a while surprise each other these are the things that make life worth it and exciting and that's literally like the best you can want from life right okay next thing we're gonna be talking about is in-laws alhamdulillah like i have the best in-laws <laughs> Um, I haven't had any sort of conflicts with them. I have seen other people in situations where the in-laws are not, maybe they're too intervening, like there's just a little bit of conflict happening over there. So my suggestion, which is just from observation and not from experience, is that before you get married, I mean, even if you already, if you are already married, you can also um, try to adjust this as well. Um, before you get married, you need to tell your spouse that or you need to get them to understand that because now you're getting married they should prioritize you and you should prioritize them over family right once you get married it is the husband first it is the wife first before family members if the spouse or the future spouse does not understand this there's gonna be problems in the future it doesn't mean you're gonna sacrifice your family it doesn't mean you're gonna ignore your family completely it's just like saying like hey there is you know some sort of a hierarchy that's gonna be established right if there is some sort of conflict if there is some sort of you know disagreement you need to tell your spouse i need you to take you know i need you to defend me or i need you to speak on my behalf because as your wife because as your husband we're you know both partners in-laws are you know an outside party they're a related party they're family right but partners are supposed to work with each other they're not supposed to betray each other they're not supposed to ignore each other like husband and wife like that is the union right of course, to some extent, you do get married to their family if you marry someone, but you're not marrying them. You're marrying the husband, you're marrying that wife, right? So I would highly recommend doing that before you get married. However, if you found yourself in a situation where you are married and you find like you're constantly being undermined by in-laws and your spouse is not really being receptive to how you're feeling or maybe they're choosing to ignore it, sometimes you need to like communicate to your partner. I feel blank when blank happens right for example like i feel overwhelmed when your mother asks me to make 10 dishes and i only have an hour to prepare you can say i am open to having guests i'm open to you know preparing meals for whoever comes over however i'm gonna need a lot more of a heads up than an hour that's not enough for me so that's just one example another thing to remind yourself is that in-laws they are not, again, they're not a part of your partnership with your husband or your wife, right? So whatever they tell you, whatever they try to like make you do that you don't want to do, you have to make sure that you take it in as a suggestion and not as an order, right? Even when your husband or your wife tells you to do something, it is a suggestion that is agreed upon by you and your spouse, right? However, in-laws are not in this partnership. They probably have, you know, some stake in the partnership, but they do not own you. They, like, they're, they're family, but it's just not the same, right? If they have something against you, if they're mischievous, if they're trying to, like, always plot against you, try to break up your relationship or whatever, you need to understand that whatever they're telling you to do that you feel pressured to and you don't want to, it is a suggestion, and that is all. Another technique that I've seen that works pretty well is if, your in-laws are just like absolutely crazy 
um, but they don't show it. They just kind of do like these little, what is it, mischievous methods to like try to get you to react. They do a lot of gaslighting, these type of techniques. The best thing you can do is just play dumb. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen several girls do this where, I don't know, maybe it's the mother-in-law, she will make snide comments about the way that she's raising her children, the way that she runs her household, whatever, and the wife that plays dumb or the wife that just ignores what she's saying tends to be the most successful because if you continue to like absorb it and take it in and like fester and become angry, eventually you're gonna explode. So you need to like find a way to have it go in one ear and out the other. At the end of the day, you have to understand that in-laws just want the best for their children and you have married their child, so they're constantly going to be, you know, inspecting you, scanning you, whatever. But you have to understand that they only have, you know, a certain level of power over you, right? You can decide to not have them have any power of you, but to a certain extent, their power is limited, right? So if all else fails, play dumb, but be smart. I could make another video on this as well, on certain things that I've learned. Thankfully, I've never had to use it because I have wonderful in-laws and I always wanted to make sure that whoever I was married to, uh, we could have a good relationship. So that is thankfully, thankfully not a problem for me, but um, unfortunately it is kind of common. It happens. I have family members who have had unfortunate experiences with their in-laws and I've seen it firsthand. It's like vicious <laughs> so yeah that is advice i have for you guys today let me know what you guys think um if you guys want me to talk with further detail on these topics this was just kind of like you know a compilation of like love and marriage advice and i really enjoyed it and i hope to have a wonderful conversation with you guys let me know what you guys think if you have any more videos suggestion ideas let me know also make sure to visit halal world depot they're amazing they have a wonderful service to bring you halal meat to your door and it's very efficient and convenient make sure to check them out let them know i sent you over there and i'll see you guys next time assalamualaikum bye